changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with your daily dose of Chicken Soup for the Soul inspiration. It's Friend Friday, and today I want to introduce you to a guy who makes me laugh several times a day, James Breakwell, who has more than one and a half million social media followers who get the inside scoop all day long on what it's like to have four little girls, a pig, and a very patient wife. James, welcome to the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast. I'm so pleased to have you on just in time for Father's Day weekend. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, you just make my day. I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of day I'm having. I follow you on Twitter, and I just burst out laughing. And yesterday I read some of your tweets to my husband, and he was having a pretty intense (laughs) working day, and he just burst out laughing. So uh, James is a professional comedy writer. As I said before, he has four little girls. The oldest one is age seven. Is that right? Yes. She, she did, we, they just had a round of birthdays. They're all close together. So the oldest two just turned seven and five. James is best known for his family humor Twitter account, which is at Exploding Unicorn, but leave off the E. So it's exploding, starting with the X, at Exploding Unicorn, which boasts more than 900,000 followers. And between Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, James has more than one and a half million followers. and He writes about family life, but he also has a Star Wars parody, which I know my producer, Chad, will be interested in that because he (laughs) loves Star Wars. Since becoming famous on the Internet, James has been profiled by USA Today, U.S. Weekly, Better Homes and Gardens, Cosmopolitan, BuzzFeed, Huffington Post, Upworthy, and all these other great television shows, websites, Internet outlets, radio shows, and James is actually scheduled to release his first book in October this year. So we're going to talk about that later also. But James, right now you're at a regular office job, right? It's not all glamour for you. (laughs) That is correct. My whole professional comedy writer thing, it's professional side comedy writer, I guess would be more accurate. Kind of living a double life there. I do the the cubicle thing and then I do the comedy writing on the side as I go and uh, kind of making a go of it. It, It's good. One helps the other. The comedy writer helps me from going insane. And hopefully, maybe within a few years here, I'll just be doing the comedy writing. Things are going pretty well on that front. Yeah, it's amazing. You have become an absolute viral sensation. And I've checked out a lot of things that are, you know, viral sensations, and I don't stick with any of them except for yours. I found yours a couple of months ago and started following you. And, you know, if I miss tweets, I actually go back and make sure that I catch all of them because they're just so funny. I don't know how you do it in 140 characters, but you're, you are a great comedy writer. It's a lot of trial and error. I mean, I think the reason my account appeals to so many people is everybody has these kind of stories about our kids. All our kids are weird. They all drive us crazy at some point. Uh, But the trick is kind of condensing that down into 140 characters. You know, there might be something that's kind of unfolding over three or four days or an hour. I mean, kids talk in novels, not in paragraphs or tweets. You kind of have to. And so sometimes they, they say something and bam, it's a tweet right there, complete and done. And other times you kind of got to summarize and condense. So I've got about 15,000 tweets on there where I've kind of perfected that to an art of what, what's the part of this story that needs to get through to communicate that. So hopefully I can, I can keep doing that in the future. Can you give me a couple of examples of recent tweets that you've done? Like yesterday, my two-year-old, we took everybody out in a bike ride and, uh, she fell down and she landed on her hand and scraped her hand. And I, you know, what do you ask her? What do you need? You know, kisses, a bandage said, I need a new hand. <laughs> Can't give you a new hand. Maybe you've been watching too much star Wars with Luke Skywalker. Um, and they, and then we had a, I had a tweet a few minutes ago about, you know, I, I love nature. And then one mosquito bite later, I just want to burn it to the ground. And that, that was kind of the same bike ride there that uh, <laughs> I've never seen so many mosquitoes in my entire life. So one, one you know, 15-minute bike ride down and back gave me a day and a half worth of tweets out of that. So it's kind of make something out of the misfortune as things go wrong. Yeah. And besides talking about your kids, you sometimes tweet about how you're in trouble with your wife. Yeah, and those are those are generally true. I get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> she's she's become more tolerant of my shenanigans over the years. But yes, I uh, 
I definitely cross the line more often than not. Does she secretly laugh at your jokes? She does. She's come around. She, believe it or not, she uh, she helps me gather material now. I, she has two different tones of voice, you know, for come here. There's the come here where I've done something wrong, and there's the come here where I need to get there quick because some kid's doing something ridiculous and I need to grab my phone. It's important to know the difference between those two tones because it, I mean, it dictates how fast I'm going to show up there. But she uh, she kind of helps catalog what the kids do so I can build jokes around it, too. So it's we've gotten along well. And plus, she let me get the pig. And after that, I feel like I really have to just kind of forgive anything else when she gets mad at me. If she let me get the pig, I think I'm, I'm good. So do you have a dog also or just a pig? We have a dog. Yeah, we had a dog for a number of years. And I always kind of secretly wanted a pig. And uh, she said I could never, you know, buy a pig. And then using social media, I made an agreement with a, with a pig breeder to, uh, well, if I can get you some social promotion, would you get me a pig for free? And they agreed, and my wife couldn't say no to a free pig, so that's how we got Gilly. So what is it like having a pig? How does that work, and what are the differences between a pig and a dog? Well, she's better potty trained than my two-year-old right now. I mean, she was <laughs> potty trained within uh, two days. We have a doggy door that our dog uses, and the pig just followed her in and out. Uh, so she's, uh, and she's pretty good with kids. I mean, my kids jump on her, pull on her tail, head butter, and she's, She's very, very calm. It's good that we got her when she's a baby, so she's used to that. The thing is, she has two different modes. There's normal, calm, relaxed pig, and there's pig when there's food in the room. And she's kind of a food, you know, like a food-seeking missile when there's any food available. So it, it was a lot like having a toddler. In the first few weeks, you figure out what the pig can get into and what she can't. So you put the garbage cans a little bit off the ground and stuff. And, and after that, I mean, it really was a lot like having a dog. The biggest difference is she eats grass. And uh, you're not supposed to double feed her. The pellets are a replacement for our grass, not in addition to it. So once our grass came in the spring, she spends half the day in our yard eating. So I don't even have to feed her anymore. She <laughs> she feeds herself. She takes herself out to the bathroom. Uh, at night, she'll actually jump into our kids' beds and tuck, her, tuck herself in there. Uh, so she's she's a lot less work in that respect. Just about once a day, she'll find something to get into, and you got to grab her by the hind legs and pull her out of it. But she's bad at sneaking food. If she would do it quietly, we'd never catch her. But she gets so excited and so loud when she gets in trouble uh, that you can hear her from across the house. She's oinking away and she's caught. And exactly. Like the other day, she got gum. <laughs> her biggest thing is gum. It doesn't matter where it is. If it could be dried in the bottom of a trash can, it could be in somebody's purse, it could be on a low table. But she gets it and she'll chew it for hours. Like she'll, she's smart enough not to swallow it, but she won't spit it out either. So we had to develop a technique. I take a water paintbrush and stick it at the back of her mouth and turn her upside down and shake her. And then the, then the gum falls out. Otherwise, it'll be in her mouth for like a month. Oh, my gosh. Well, we're going to pause now for a word from our sponsor. And then we're going to come back and talk about what it's like to raise four daughters. But we got a very cool sponsor for the podcast, The Great Courses Plus, which I had always heard of, but I didn't know much about it. It turns out they have Hundreds of courses on all different topics, everything from science to psychology to cooking to history to genealogy to the arts, including writing. And the courses are taught by university professors and other acclaimed experts. And as a Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast listener, you can try out The Great Courses Plus for a month for free. Just go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash soup to sign up. The course that I'm watching right now is called Everyday Gourmet, Rediscovering the Lost Art of Cooking. And it was actually created in partnership with the Culinary Institute of America. I was hooked right from the first lecture because this chef does a great job. And the first thing he did was show us dinner the way that I would cook it. And then using the exact same ingredients, he showed how he would make it. As one of my listeners, you can watch this course for free or anything else that interests you, just go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash soup. Make sure you include the word the. It's thegreatcoursesplus.com. And then make sure you type the slash symbol and then the word soup in order to get a whole month for free. That's thegreatcoursesplus.com slash soup. So, James, I know that in addition to raising the four kids, having the pig, having the real job, you also wrote a book, and it's coming out in October. Can you tell us about that? Yes, it's uh, Only Dead on the Inside, A Parent's Guide to Survive in the Zombie Apocalypse. 
And uh, I love zombies and I like, you know, imagining, you know, how they'd change any situation. You're at the grocery store. Well, how would this be different if there were zombies? You're at a restaurant. What if there were zombies? And it's, I took it and added zombies to raising kids, which is kind of a hairy situation on its own already. Uh, but all the zombie guides out there, and I've read some and they're fun, you know, they always kind of assume you're a, you're a Bear grills type guy. You can go out there and build a, you know, uh, build a fire and survive on your own and use a gun. But what about the rest of us? I mean, it's hard enough to, you know, get the kids dressed to go out the door in the morning, you know, can you imagine dragging four children or two children or however many through the zombie apocalypse? I mean, they, you know, the temper tantrums about socks would get you killed. So that's the, the whole premise behind the book of what do you, how do you, how do you raise children when there are zombies? So it's a traditional parenting book and a zombie survival guide combined into one kind of in a, a genre that doesn't exist yet, but should exist because I think there's going to be demand out there for for this specific thing, assuming zombies actually come, which they will. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that you'll you can make anything popular with your fabulous tweets and your Instagram posts. Now, how do you monetize being a social media phenomenon? Uh, people people come to me, companies come to me about they want me to promote various products, and sometimes they just want me to do it for free, which I generally don't do. It's hard to hard to make a living for free, uh, but they'll uh, they'll ask you know just to promote things or to use it and to show my kids and myself using it. We've had a few where we went uh, lately. It's been they have having us go places and and stay places and kind of tweet about the experience. So that's kind of fun because. I'm kind of a home buddy by default. It's a lot easier to keep the kids at home. So, so we've kind of gone out of our comfort zone a little bit and they'll say, you know, go here and, and, you know, have fun and just take pictures of it and tweet about it. Uh, and that, that's what we've been doing. And sometimes we make videos to go with it. So it, it's neat. Um, it's not consistent enough to live off right now. Uh, and maybe it will be at some point. So it, it's kind of, it's low pressure for me a little bit because I don't need it to survive. So I can say no, you know, if it doesn't seem like it'd be convenient or fun. So we kind of only do the fun ones right now. And it's, 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 been a, it's been a neat experience. So you must have been asked to do some pretty weird things, too. Can you tell us one of the really weird things you've been asked to do that you decided not to do without naming any names? Oh, um, well, I don't know if it's necessarily how weird. I mean, like one company that I was sad that didn't work out, they had, uh, they had these, these fake like weapons you could fight with. I was really excited about that. Now, now the parent to me is like, this is a horrible idea. Uh, you know, the kids are going to, we've got some low hanging chandeliers. They're going to destroy that. They're going to destroy the, uh, each other. The other part of me is like, oh man, weapons. <laughs> so I, I actually did try to make a deal with them, but they didn't want to, they didn't want to pay anything, which is kind of a no go. People kind of, they, they don't quite understand how Twitter works. It's like, you know, I can't, I can't accept $0 in a free plastic weapon to broadcast this to a, you know, a million or a million and a half people. Uh, and, and other things uh, that they, they've asked me to do, um, mostly just the, uh, I guess that's probably the weirdest one that comes to mind right now. Every once in a while, actually, what I'll have is, is companies. They won't, uh, they won't ask to advertise, but they'll reply to my tweets or they'll start arguments or fights with it. There's a frozen pizza company that gets feisty every time I tweet about pizza, which is kind of fun. I don't, <laughs> I don't reply usually. But, and then one time, a cereal company photoshopped my, uh, my living room. My kids had spilled uh, their brand of cereal all over a white chair, and they went through and photoshopped all the cereal out and said, cleaned it for you, James. And I thought that was pretty funny. That is funny. That's clever. They kind of deserved the exposure for that. Well, I really appreciate you coming on today at the beginning of Father's Day weekend. For all the dads out there, go to this Twitter account, Exploding Unicorn, without the E, or look up James Breakwell on his website, explodingunicorn.com, with the E in that case. You will really get a laugh from it. And I want to wish everyone a happy Father's Day weekend. And if you're a mom and you've had it by the end of the weekend, you might enjoy the story I have scheduled for Monday. We're going to meet a mom who got tired of her kids complaining all the time and went on strike. And it worked. James, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 